This video is brought to you by Videoblocks. What's up folks, Jordy here for Cinecam.net and you're watching Copycat Friday. Every week we look for a creative way to recreate an effect from a film or music video. And today we are having a look at the ghost effect, the supervillain in the new Ant-Man and Wasp film. Because, you know, just a few people are asking for it. We're going to create this inside Adobe Premiere Pro and I think you're going to be pretty amazed at how simple it's going to be. But first up, a quick shout out to our sponsor Videoblocks. For a single price per year, you can download unlimited video assets from their growing library, such as stock clips, After Effects templates, video effects, overlays and a ton more. You can check it out yourself by clicking the first link in the description below. Now let's create a costume and build a film set. Step into my circle with the opposite of Urkel. When I pull up flying purple, people eaters couldn't buy to me. I feel the fate of Herschel. And I just leave them on the limb and hand them up in this is rappers of walking that I already. So as you can see, we built the mask from Ghost from Ant-Man. And one tip when you're making costumes or masks for cosplay, use this wire. It's very handy when sculpting. Saganara. Kamikaze rockin' body armor when I change lanes Hard enough to body box to pull and shake his main frame He got shook and disappeared Etch a sketch and ever since nobody heard his bullshit for eight days I sacrificed some great relationships To do a passion I was chasing quick But when you've got everything to lose and nothing to gain Unless you make a bit with old friends Cause they get home and watch Hey Lorenzo, zip me up There is no zipper <laughs> <laughs> this was a totally not put in scene. <laughs> this here is actually a stormtrooper suit that we once used to create a massive cloning effect. That was a pretty cool video. You can find a link to it in the description below if you like so. You want to film yourself in front of a green screen and we are using a portable chroma frame, which is something that I can definitely recommend to anyone. It's pretty cheap and if you're doing more visual effects, you'll be using it a lot. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. To film this from a tripod. Oh, it's not a chocolate camera. The first shot is where you make a certain movement. Keep standing on the exact same spot and let someone else change the shutter speed in your camera. Set it to 1 20th of a second to introduce more motion blur. You also want to close your aperture now a little bit to compensate for the exposure. Now just film several extra movements and these are going to be the ghosts around you. Finally set your shutter speed back to default and remove the green screen to film an empty space that will function as the background. You can also choose for a different background in post-production, just make sure that the lighting on your subject matches with the surroundings. Jenny, Jenny, catch. <laughs> Yay! This was not put in scene at all. In Adobe Premiere Pro, you want to place your empty shot on the bottom. On top of that goes a few slower shutter speed shots. Then on top of that goes a normal shot of you dodging something. And then again on top of that, you can place a few more of those slower shutter speed shots. And this way we have a few ghost effects coming from behind the main subject and a few on top. I'm going to disable the output of all the layers except for the one on the bottom, which is our background and of course the layer on top. Select that top layer and head over to the effects controls from where you want to click on the pen tool under opacity. And this allows you to create a mask around the green screen. Next, apply the ultra key effect to this clip to remove the green. And since all of the shots are the same, I can simply select the opacity property and that ultra key effect. Copy that and enable all the other tracks again. Select those tracks and hit Ctrl V to paste the mask and the ultra key effect on all of the rest. And bang, it's that simple. Now let's work on the ghosts or the echoes. First, let's decrease the opacity of all the ghosts. Set some to 20, others to 30 or 40% to have some difference between them. Then look at the movement of your main subject and try to match the movements of the ghosts. For example, when I move to the left, a ghost is already moving to that point first. And you can easily change the time position of your clips with the slip tool in Premiere Pro. Simply drag your clip to the left or to the right to change its in and out point without moving the clip around in your timeline. 
Finally, trim the ghost effects to let them start and stop randomly. In the end though, all the ghosts have to go somehow back to the ending position of your character. And what we did to synchronize that was speeding up or slowing down some of the ghost effects with the Rate Stretch tool. Simply drag a clip out or in to change its speed. And this is nothing complex, but it does take some time to align the ghost effects properly. And once you're done, you can add a cross dissolve to all the ghost clip to let them fade in and out. And now comes something pretty amazing, guys. Now, the ghost effects should get an RGB glitch effect. And if you've seen any tutorial about how to create that, it always involves duplicating the desired clips two times, extracting the red, green, and blue channel from it to blend them back together and offset it to get the glitch effect. It's a ton of work, so we were looking for an easier way to create an RGB split, and we found it. Apparently, as of the 2018 update in Premiere Pro, they introduced several effects for virtual reality editing. But these effects also work for normal footage. Here we got the VR dramatic aberration effect. Simply drag that to one of the ghost effects. It will look weird at first, but that's because you want to drag the chromatic aberration effect above the ultra key. With just one simple drag and drop, you got yourself an RGB split effect. How cool is that? And you can fine tune this glitch more by playing around with the RGB controls inside the effect itself. And by the way guys, finding these VR effects has opened up a whole new perspective. So stay tuned for next Tuesday as we're going to reveal something pretty awesome that every Premiere Pro user is going to get wild for. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and click that bell icon next to it so that you definitely won't miss that video. So, just apply this VR chromatic aberration effect to all the ghosts and set some different RGB values. This glitch is pretty cool, but we want it to be more subtle, which is why we're going to click on the pen tool under that chromatic aberration effect to draw a mask on the area that we want to see that glitch on. Do this for all the ghost layers and make sure it looks a little bit more random. Finally, we're going to add a Gaussian blur to all the ghost layers as well. Just increase this slightly to around 20. And this should already give you the ghosting effect, but we're going to do a few more things to fine tune it better. We ran into the issue that the speed of the movement wasn't fast enough. So what I'm going to do here is select everything in my timeline except for the bottom layer, which is our background, then right click and choose Nest. And this will group everything together into one layer. Then right click on the FX button in the top left corner of that nested sequence and choose Time Remapping Speed. If you now take the pen tool from the toolbox, you can click on the line in that clip to create keyframes. You want to create a point where you want the clip to go faster and another one on the end where it has to go back to normal speeds. That line represents the speed, so if we lift that up from the middle, the clip will go faster between the two keyframes. And this technique is called time remapping. What you can also do is drag open the keyframes, and this will gradually increase the speed of the clip and make the speed change look a lot more smoother. And now there's one last thing that I want to do, and that is adding some additional glitch effects. To do this, I'm adding a short adjustment layer to the top of my clip. And on here, I apply the VR digital glitch effect. And by the way, guys, if you can't find these effects, then make sure to update your Creative Cloud apps to the latest updates. These are just built-in plugins. So from this effect, I'm going to animate the master amplitude to let the glitch fade in and out shortly. And to make sure that it's more alive, I'm also going to animate the distortion evolution. And this will give some more random movement to the glitch. Now, of course, we only want this glitch to appear on the subject itself. So that's why I'm going to click on the pen tool under the VR digital glitch effect and draw a rough mask over the subject. And once that is done, also make sure to feather the mask a tiny bit. And then just simply duplicate that adjustment layer to multiple places over your edit where you want to see this additional glitch. So the next time that you see an ant or a wasp, just simply turn into ghost and destroy them. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Vlogs, for your support. And like always, stay creative. Watch out, kids. It's danger here. Dude. It's dangerous. <laughs> it's dangerous here. Oh, je suis français, mais oui. Oh, baguette. Jordi is officially becoming ghost. Ooh. Ah, my nose. <laughs>